it's me, Shaw360, and this is my review of the episodes 13 and 14 of Dubby. Now, I just want to start out by saying, I am not stupid. Like, I'm not a genius, but I'm not stupid. You know, I know a few things. I used to make decent grades in school. I do okay on work jobs. But this show makes me feel like a complete dummy. Like, there's so many layers upon layers of things and universe jumping and everything else that... I'm to the point now where I don't know if I can summarize this show, honestly, because there's just so much going on, so much more than I feel like I can explain. Timelines, you bounce back and forth. I don't know. I'm going to do the best I can, guys, but I I don't know. I, I don't know. And the show's still great. Like, don't get me wrong. As confused as I am, I'm still right here with the show. You don't know how many times while I was watching these episodes that I was screaming into the show's screen, especially when Dad appeared for Yunju and she started telling him like everything that's gone on while he was asleep. I was literally at the screen going, "You dumb bitch! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up!" I was like, I was really. I was feeling it. I was feeling it. So the show, I'm still totally captured by the show. I still cannot wait to watch the last two episodes. Like, I'm pumped, but I'm so confused. And what's confusing me right now is the whole first, second, and third hypothesis thing and the way that characters can summon people from the real world, the rules that define how things can appear in the Manwha world. Like, that is bothering me. Now, this is the thing. Until kind of Kang Chul told us what the rule was in terms of how somebody appears in and out of W, I didn't know that you had to be in the same spot in Seoul for you to be able to jump between the W world and the real world in certain places. I'm, I'm sure I'm explaining it wrong. Okay, for instance, when the killer is inside the jailhouse and then he jumps into the real world but when he jumps into the real world he's outside the jailhouse that seems like that shouldn't work because when kong chul first went back to the w world to stand outside of the killer's door he had to be at that exact same location in seoul for him to be in that exact same location in w and so on and so forth also, if I recall, when Yunju was put in prison, she was able to jump from the prison back into the real world in some random spot, but then when she got brought back into W, she was left off at the same place her character left off in the narrative. So I'm very confused about what the rules are for the universe jumping, like that is something I can, I'm totally confused about. I'm also confused about like the link between the killer and the dad because the killer oh I'm sorry spoiler warnings for everything by the way if you don't know the killer ends up getting killed in the manhwa and when the killer gets killed dad gets his face back but along with dad getting his face back he gets all of the memories from the killer and I don't know how that happens either because I don't feel like the killer had all of the dad's memories when the killer took dad's face because I feel like if the killer took all of dad's memories and all of dad's emotions he probably wouldn't have wanted to kill Yunju because definitely the dad when he gets all of the killer's memories he he feels like he killed his daughter you know so I that was confusing to me too. Like I really, I'm, um, what the hell? What the hell? So yeah, I'm, I'm confused, but I'm gonna try to do the best I can with the summary. You know, wish me luck and let's begin. So uh, we start out the episode with Yunju and Kang Chul about to go on a coffee date, I guess. She's getting off work, she's got her cute clothes on, and while she's walking to the coffee date, she has this fantasy of the life they'll live together once Dad comes back to himself and the W comic is finally over. So she has this fantasy about them wearing couples clothes and her introducing him to all of her family and, you know, everything going peachy peachy keen. But before that can happen, Kong Chul lets her know, hey, we've got to wrap up stuff in W. I need to go back to the W land and type a few loose ends. But yeah, we need to go ahead and do that right now. 
So he drives to a hotel. When he drives to the hotel, he sees Sui from W walking out of the hotel, which is really weird because he knows he's not in W land, but he doesn't know how he's seeing her and how they make eye contact. This is where another hypothesis comes up where Kang Chul now believes that he can summon people from the W world. Now this comes in really super handy when we get to episode 14, but I'm just saying, like, it's, it's interesting. So that comes up. Then Yunju goes back to the house because, you know, she's got her little booklet of things that she needs to do for Kang Chul to draw and stuff when she gets back home. All of a sudden, Dad is not in his locked bedroom. So she calls Subong like, hey, where the hell is Dad? Subong's in the hospital because, you know, all this stuff has been bad on his nerves. He's like, Dad should be in the bedroom. That's where he was when I left. I don't know what the fuck's going on. All of a sudden, from down the hall, here comes Dad with his face. And so, of course, you know, Yoonjun's thinking, all right, the killer must be dead in the comics. This is wonderful. My thing is this. You know that you haven't drawn everything that Kang Chul needed you to draw yet. And I don't know when's the last time you checked up on the web drama, but you should be leery because you know that the killer has your dad's face and you know that the killer knows how to jump between realms. And this is when I was screaming at my television. So dad comes out like, oh honey, what happened? I've been out. What's been going on with you and Kong Chul? I, I'm so confused. And she's like, oh dad, we have all these plans for the killer and don't worry, it's been taken care of and Kong Chul's here and I'm doing that, like totally letting out the plot. And whoever is editing the show and lighting the show, <laughs> the transformation of dad into the killer when he's like, oh, so Kong Chul isn't here, is he? It was so fucking creepy, but I mean, immediately you could tell that Yunju's heart drops and she realizes she's been played. That's not daddy. That is the killer. And of course the killer's like, you know, I gotta kill you because my whole goal in life is to kill every single person that Kong Chul loves until I kill him. Uh, and I'm gonna kidnap you right now. And also, just in case you're wondering, I'll tell you how I escaped. I managed to jump from the W world into the real world, kill a police officer, steal his clothes, and show up over here. Not only that, but your daddy is out of the room and he's going to be drawing all the stuff I need in order to make my plans for this comic book happen. So the killer kidnaps uh, Yunju, takes her to the comic book. He threatens the prosecutor because the prosecutor's scared. Because when uh, Kong Chul went back and put his dead body in his safe house, he left a will asking for the prosecutor to check to see if there had been any connection between the killer and the prosecutor. So the prosecutor is like, I need to I need to find a way to get myself extricated from any association with the killer because this is going to ruin my chances of becoming president of Korea. And so he was going to send some thugs to kill the killer so that there wouldn't even be a question about anything because that case would be completely wrapped up. And of course the killer knows this because Yoonju basically told him everything that was going to happen. So the killer calls the prosecutor and is like, you're going to help me find a safe house and I'm going to hang out there and then I'll give you further instructions so you can help me do the things that I plan to do and you're not going to be able to backstab me because I know everything that's going on in this show. So. The killer is instructed to go to this warehouse as a safe house. When he gets to the warehouse, first things first, he's got to kill Yunju because that's the last person that Kong Chul loved. That's his wife, so that's his family. He's got to kill her. Right when he's about to kill her, here comes all the goons that the prosecutor sent. And of course, the killer, you know, being a dead shot, he plucks them down like nothing. He doesn't even break a sweat running after them. He literally just turns around like, boom, boom. Bong, bong, bong. Kills him. Like all three he manages to hit with five shots. And dead on too. It's crazy. And of course Yunju being slightly smarter than she was when she told dad all the plot. She turns around and tries to run away. He shoots her in the back. He shoots her in the back and because he's an awesome shot he probably shot her straight through the heart or something. I mean he's just... Whoo! The killer is cold. So the killer leaves the is leaving the warehouse, and as he gets in the car about to leave, Kong Chul manages to jump from the real world into the W world after he finds out what's happened. 
And from what I understand, he finds out what happens because he's back in W World at the hotel when um, his assistant guy, bodyguard guy, gets the call of the killer's escape jail. So of course Kong Chul knows I've got to get back to the real world and find out what the hell happened because that's where the killer would have jumped. And he realizes that, you know, the killer has let dad out. He caused dad to destroy the tablet they were using to draw the comic on and he's going about with his nefarious plan. Kong Chul shows up at the prosecutor's office in the real world and then makes himself go to the W world and he beats the shit out of the prosecutor to find out where the prosecutor sent the killer. Then with that information, he goes to the warehouse and he's in the car and the killer's in the car and this is probably the dopest scene in the entire series in terms of action scenes. They play a game of Fatal Chicken. They run their cars into each other. And then right when the cars hit each other, they have like a point blank shootout between their windshields. And Kong Chul manages to kill the killer in this, I don't know what the fuck you'd call it, like game of chicken slash Russian roulette. I don't know what it is, but it was a really dope scene. Like I was... I was completely like, oh, who, who's going to survive? Who's going to what? You know, I was really, really excited. Hold on a second. I'm sorry, you guys. My allergies are crazy, so I just need to wipe my nose real quick. But yeah, Kong Chul manages to survive. The killer is killed. Kong Chul goes into the warehouse looking for his wife because he's seen the comic and he sees where his wife has been shot in the back. He goes to the warehouse. She's gone. Somehow or another, in her kind of wounded state, she manages to pull herself back into the real world where she's found by people who work in this warehouse and they send her to the hospital. But unfortunately, it is too late. After arriving in the real world in the hospital, she's declared brain dead. Kong Chul takes her back into the W world to try to get her help, to try to make things work, but she goes brain dead in W as well. As well. Now, during this time, her father, because the killer's gone, he manages to magically get his face back. And when he comes back into the real world, he's told about what happened with the killer. He's told about, you know, him being faceless. He's also told that his daughter is missing. And he reads the comic and he sees that his daughter has been shot in the back. They show up at the hospital and the hospital people are like, I'm sorry, but she's gone. Some Her husband came and took her. Kong Chul shows up back at the house and he lets dad know she died in the comic book. And dad is devastated because he's got these memories from the killer. He remembers killing his daughter and he can't live with himself. He tries to drink and pill himself away, like do a suicide through that. But Kong Chul's like, no, I'm not going to let you get away with this. You're going to the hospital. You need to sober up. And that's when Kong Chul proves how brilliant he is because the kid is so smart. He's like, the reason why I kidnapped her from the hospital and I took her to the Manwa to die is because you can change the Manwa world. You can draw her back to life. You have this power. Because she's now a comic book character like me, she can live and die in these worlds. And so I thought that was really smart. I knew he, that's kind of where he was going for, but I thought it was really cool that he put that out there. And of course, Dad's like, well, what about the tablet? You know, I, I, I broke the tablet. I remember doing that. That's when Kong Cho says, yeah, but when you were the killer, you had faceless Dad draw another tablet and put it in the trunk of the car. I think I can find that tablet in the manual world and I think it does the exact same thing that the old tablet did. I'll bring it back here, draw your daughter back to life. And it's cool that he did it because dad was about to jump off the roof of the hospital. Like dad was really, he was, he was on the edge and I don't blame him. You know, he's fucked up this whole comic book world thing. The killer from the comic book is killing people in real life and now he's managed to kill his own daughter. I mean, you know, dad's pretty wrecked, so, you know, if this could possibly work, dad's down for it. So, Kang Chul goes back into the W world. He knows that the prosecutor has the tablet, because the prosecutor showed up to the warehouse after Kang Chul had beat him up in his office. Kang Chul at this point had already disappeared back to the real world, so he's not at the scene. The prosecutor, because he's an evil son of a bitch, he had a pair of gloves in his glove compartment 
puts them on so that he doesn't leave any evidence. First thing he does, he takes out the note that has his handwriting in Kong Chul's car. Takes out the cell phone from the killer because the killer's dead. Opens the killer's trunk, takes the tablet out. I mean, any shred of evidence that could connect him with the scene, he is busy trying to clean that shit up. And he takes this tablet back to his office and he turns the tablet on and at first you think like, okay, well he turned it on but he didn't really know what to do with it, so whatever. No ma'am. No ma'am. Kong Chul goes back to the prosecutor's office, goes and sees the tablet, tries to turn it on, gets injected with some medicine of some sort. It was a trap. Somehow or another, the prosecutor was able to find out that the tablet makes things manifest in the W world. So let's say I draw a picture of a shoe on the tablet. It all, all of a sudden manifest itself in the W world and be like a real solid thing. So the prosecutor now has Kong Chul right where he wants him. He's got him tied up. He's already been declared dead in the W world so of course the prosecutor can torture him, do whatever the fuck he wants to to him. And he's got this tablet which basically is like being declared a god. So Kong Chul basically tells him, you know, this tablet can do anything you want it to do and the reason I needed to get this tablet is because this tablet could save my wife's life and he tells the truth about what the tablet can do but of course the prosecutor not knowing about the W versus the real world he has no reason to believe this so he does a couple of things first he reveals that his wife is in his penthouse dying then he also says You've already seen how you can make these medicines appear. You've seen how you can make these guns appear. Go to the hospital. Go to this room. And I promise you, I can show you how this tablet really works. Well, the prosecutor goes to the, ho the hospital room. And there's this old lady there. So he doesn't think it's working. But this is where Kong Chul is, again, the ace. He manages to manifest himself out of the W world and into the real world. Then he summons the prosecutor into the real world, into the same ho hospital room where Dad is. And that's when Dad and Su Bong are talking about the tablet, and the prosecutor's like, oh shit, maybe this is real. But before he can really react, Su Bong sees the tablet, dives for the prosecutor, Dad beats the prosecutor over the head, they grab the tablet, and Dad gets to fucking work. And he brings his daughter back, which... Thank goodness. Kong Chul, of course, he's all beat up and we don't know what's going to happen with him because he gets found in the real world in this other warehouse that he was kidnapped to. But he leaves that warehouse to grab a taxi and we thought he was going to go to the hotel because that's where Yoonju woke up in the real world at because she was in the hotel in the W world. But when she goes outside of the hotel, he's not there. But I think she's back in W land because... Sui is walking into the hotel, which is strange, and then in the corner you see a new symbol. It doesn't say to be continued. It says final episode. <gasps> Ooh. Now one thing I noticed about episode 13 is that usually at the beginning of the episode they do like a comic book run. You know they have like the little things that you know W is the most popular comic in South Korea blah blah blah. They didn't do that at the beginning of episode 13 which I found to be very interesting but they did do it at the beginning of episode 14 but do you know who did it this time? The prosecutor! <gasps> Ooh, interesting. But yeah I, I'm interested to see kind of where it's gonna go from here because there's so many twists and turns. I still really love the relationship between Kang Chul and Yunju because it, for a long time it kind of seemed like Yunju was more invested in the love she had for Kang Chul than Kang Chul was to her. But at one point in the drama, when um, the father is talking to Kang Chul on the roof of the hospital, Kang Chul reveals, you know, Yunju is truly my only family. She's not the family whose false memories you gave me, she literally is the first time I created a will for myself and I decided to create a family member and I decided to love somebody. And so I need her to survive because she's the only true part of me that was of my own creation and not manipulated by you. So I love watching their relationship develop and become richer and deeper. And you know, um, the actor who plays Kang Chul, he he's a good actor in terms of like he has a really open friendly face and he can play you know sly and slick and funny and charming and stuff like that but he doesn't seem to do like tears 
are like, you know, he, at least he doesn't do snotty tears in this show. Uh, but he does intense very well. And I think that's one of the things that I've really loved about him playing this is that the moments when he's not kind of completely slick, when he's kind of, I don't know how to describe this, not put together, but like in the moments when he's not playing the action hero, he does a very intense sort of emotional range with his face. That even though he's not crying really hard, you still can read all the emotion on of his on his face and I really love that about him. I think that that's one of his strongest suits. The actress in this show, the more I watch this show, the more I feel like she was absolutely perfect casting. I love her in this show. I think she's so great. But the two standout actors to me in this particular set of episodes definitely had to be the father for playing both the father and the killer. He did it brilliantly. He was super fucking creepy when he was the killer. And he was super pathetic and sad when he was the dad. And then I have to give it to Su Bong. I don't know what it is about Su Bong. Because he dresses crazy. And he's just a neurotic mess. But I just love every scene that that actor is in. Every single scene he's in. I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to see what he's wearing. I can't see, wait to see how he freaks out. Because in a lot of ways, he's us. Like, could you imagine if you were thrown into the midst of some weird setup like this? And you're having to kind of search for clues. And you don't know if people are going to stay dead. If people are going to get their faces back. And you're just kind of thrown into the mix. You're not even a main character. You're definitely a side character. But you are in all of this drama. And you're wondering, what am I going to be off? I am a side character. Side characters are, dis are disposable. What the hell? Like, he just plays it so well and he's so likable and like the more I watch him on the show the cuter he gets to me too like I'm looking at him thinking you're not half bad buddy but yeah I, I just I really enjoy this show I, I don't know where it's going I will I will make no predictions normally I love to make predictions about shows this show I can't make a prediction I have no idea what's gonna happen but I am here for every moment of it I cannot wait for the finale to show the finale airs next week which is the reason why I'm not doing the view for episode 15 because like I said I do two episodes at a time and even though the episode timing is kind of weird and you've got 14 and 15 airing together I'm waiting to see 15 so I can run right into 16 right after it but yeah I'm gonna miss W when it's gone I'm I'm definitely gonna miss it when it's gone and it makes me want to go and watch Queen Inion's Man because I've never watched that one but I've heard really great things about it but I am completely invested in this show it's wonderful I'm so glad that this was recommended to me it's been so much more than I could have ever expected it to be and I hope that if you guys have any friends who have been kind of hesitant or reticent to watch K-dramas, that you will pass this to them because this right here, I think, is probably the best intro to K-dramas you could give anybody because it's not what K-dramas typically are, but it definitely showcases the best of what K-dramas can be. And it's really interesting premises played out over a set amount of time and with actors who really do feed you all of the emotions every single minute of every scene. All right, guys. Well, I will talk to you guys on the last review for W. And if you haven't already seen it on my channel, I do have a wrap-up of Uncontrollably Fond. So check that out if you are watching Uncontrollably Fond as well. I don't know what the next shows will be. I'll probably start watching Drinking Solo just because Key from Shiny is in it. I don't know if I'm going to watch Scarlet Heart because... <sighs> I don't know there's a lot of people on that cast and that makes for a really hard time reviewing because you got to keep up with all the characters uh but i'll think about it i don't know if you guys have any other suggestions leave those down below i'd love to hear them and i will talk with you later bye